this is the place where I found Jesus. This is the place where I have grown in God. This is the place where I found another family, the family of Christ here at Bethel. This is the place where I have discovered new realms of God's word and his spirit. This is the place that's changed me forever. And this is the place for you as well, where you have experienced God and he's done great things in you and through you. You know, we've been talking about this is the place and we've talked about how this is the place where I found Jesus. This is the place where I understood what it meant to serve. Last week, we talked a little bit about, you know, overcoming those excuses of why we don't serve. But as disciples, we see Jesus modeling servanthood for us. We see him washing the disciples' feet. We see him showing us what this looks like. And this is the place where we learn to serve. We overcome our excuses and we grow in Christ as we serve. This week, we're going to dive into a little bit different component of this. And you know, when I think about this is the place, this is the place where I believe you can experience belonging and relationship. I believe that you can't have that, but it's a two-way street. And sometimes we got to work on that together. But I also believe that belonging and relationship has always been God's plan. It's always been his idea to say, you know what, we need relationship. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 2. If you don't have a Bible, um, you can look and there's a seat pocket nearby. You can grab the Bible out of there and you can take that home. If you don't have one, we'd love you to have that. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, this is what we see happen here. Then the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. See, now, many of us, when we hear that passage of scripture, we might immediately go to, I have this idea of marriage, or, you know, we kind of go to that concept, but I want us to look broader than that, because what God does is he looks at this and says, it is not good for a human being to be alone. He had relationship with Adam. They're walking in the garden in the cool of the day, so they've got this great relationship, but God knew that wasn't enough. So if I said to you this morning, a relationship with God isn't enough. Some of you are like, wait a second. Now, listen, Jesus is enough for my salvation. He covers my sin. He is the way, the truth, and life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. That's what I believe. But I also believe in this, God is showing us a principle that he believes that a relationship with just him is not enough. He designed us to have community. He designed us to have belonging. He designed us to have relationship with each other. And not just in the context of marriage that we often associate this verse with, but in relationship within the body of Christ. This is the place where we find belonging and relationship. Now that's sometimes easier said than done, isn't it? And so we're going to look at this in a greater context. But I believe that this was his intentions. That he would say, this is good, but this is required as well. And I get a kick out of some people that say, I'm a Christian, but I don't need church. (laughs) Uh. I go to the hills for my sanctuary. So do I. I love it up there. Some of my best God moments that I can remember have been in the Black Hills. I love it. But I also know something. I can't be a loner and still grow in Christ if I don't have this relationship. We've got to have that. We've got to have this belonging. We have to have these relationships that become established. We need relationship with God. We need relationship with other people. I mean, we see Jesus model this. We see it, you know, with family and friends. We see him model this. Throughout the New Testament, we see Jesus lived his life in the context of friendship and community. There was reference to the multitude, a large group. There's then the 70, then there's the 12, and then there were the three disciples of those 12 that he was the closest to. See, there is context that we need to look at. And Jesus had this relationship and these multiple relationships, and we all need the same thing. We can't be an island unto ourselves, but this is the place where we discover belonging. Over 50 times in the New Testament, the beauty and power of friendship is expressed over 50 times. Look at John chapter 15 with me. I'll give you a second to turn there. By the way, if you're just copying off the screen, that's cool. That's what it's there for. But make sure you're looking at scripture for yourself. And I say this before, never take a preacher's word for it, okay? All right? Sometimes he gets it wrong, all right? Matter of fact, in the first service, I quoted a passage of scripture wrong, and somebody corrected me. I loved it. It was awesome. You know why? Because they looked at the word of God. We got to look at it together. Amen? All right. 
John 15, verse 11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I loved you. Look at your neighbor, say, I love you. you. (laughs) Some of you are like, I don't know you. (laughs) I ain't saying I love you. (laughs) Verse 13, greater love has no one than this, than someone laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. See, he understood something. He understood that this is the principle that the father put into perspective, and he was here to live it out. And we as the church have the ability to execute that kind of life by having a relationship with each other. We need to have this relationship. We need to have friendships. We need to be connected. The church must live this out. God wants us to move from whatever degree of isolation you are in to relationships of belonging. He wants you to move into that. You can't be isolated in an island unto yourself. How do we do this? First thing we have to do, we have to recognize our need. We've got to recognize our need. You know, the first step is admitting you have a problem, right? Okay, well, you and I have a problem if we're isolated. If we're isolated, not just in one area, but in multiple areas of our life, we have an issue and we have to deal with this. And as we deal with this, we have to face our need. And we have to understand that I, this relationship with God is great, but it's not enough. He desires us to have belonging. He desires us to be connected one to another. We need this. We have to recognize this too. You know, in our society, we are in this mindset that we don't always need each other. It's about me, myself, and I. And our technology really doesn't help. And listen, I got a smartphone. I love it. You know, I get text messages. I get emails. I get everything on there. I get a cool app called Bethel Assembly. Um, Shameless plug. And anyway, so, you know, we have all these things. But what happens in our society today is that instead of talking to each other, we just text each other. We're in the same stinking room. How you doing? Fine. We do that because we have built up barriers and we've become this isolation perspective of saying, you know what? We need this buffer zones and we don't want to let anybody in. So let's just communicate through technology and through a couple things on the keypad and call it good. And we have missed it. I believe the American church today has missed it because we have thrown out relationships and think that Jesus is just enough. Woo. Yeah. He is enough for my salvation. But for me to grow and understand who I am in Christ, I need you. We need each other. And so we miss it because we get into these mindsets, these little worlds, these little bubbles. And God is asking us to break through that. God isn't wanting us to, and I'm saying not technology is bad. I'm not saying any of that. But we get into these empty perspectives where it's just about a couple keystrokes and not about a conversation. So many of us don't even know how to have a conversation with each other. The next generation, I'm really worried because they don't know how to talk. They just go, LOL, (laughs) right? And listen, I'm the same way. I communicate a lot the same way. But the reality is, is that we have to get in each other's face. We have to get to know each other. We have to understand each other's history, our perspectives, our backgrounds, our dreams, and our fears. And you can't get that through a text message. You can't feel that and know what the person's going through. It's got to be face to face. We've got to move past this empty perspective into a mindset where we're sharing life together. God wants us to move to whatever, from whatever degree of isolation we are in now to a place of belonging. How do we do this? Again, we got to recognize our need. we got to understand that we do need this, that we can't be by ourselves. We do need each other. The second thing that we have to do is fight through the barriers. We have barriers in our life, and we have to fight through them. Some of them are cultural. Some of them are technological, okay? And some of them are personal. We have these different barriers and all of them are different re- for perspectives. Like for instance, you know, if you've been in church before and you've been hurt by somebody, you have a personal barrier that you have to work through because you've been hurt. So guess what? You stiff arm everybody. No, no, I'm not letting you in my bubble because I got hurt once. Let me give you a news flash. There's not one person in this room that hasn't been hurt. You're not alone. But if we actually start talking about it, we can start learning from each other and stop hurting each other. Let's start communicating. Start talking and developing belonging and relationship. 
See, we have these barriers, and they come from different perspectives, whether it's personal or cultural, or it's maybe it's our job. You know, well, I don't have a relationship with people in the church because of my job. We, just in case you don't know, we meet on more than just Sunday. Just in case you didn't know, okay? And we have all these opportunities for you to get connected, okay? And if you can't get connected, all right, and if you're a guest here, just so you know, you're going to get a letter from me, and it's got my cell, cell number in it. And if you haven't, you know, if you've never filled out that card, okay, then you haven't got my cell number, and you can call me. Yes, I give my number out to everyone. You can call me. And when you call me, guess what I'm going to do? Hey, let's get you connected. Let's get you connected to the body of Christ. See, we have to have relationship. We have to have belonging. If we're going to grow in who we need to be and what God's intended for us. So we've got to fight past these hurdles. See, but the enemy wants to mess us up in our head and think that, no, you know what? I've been hurt or it's this or it's that. So I isolate myself. You ever been, you ever see, you know, documentaries in the plains of Africa, you see the lions and they're chasing, you know, the herd of gazelles or whatever else. And they separate the one out. And when they separate the one out, guess what happens? Lunchtime, Right? And see, the thing is, is that's what the enemy's doing with people in the body of Christ. Listen, if I can separate you out from the herd, you're mine. And we think that if I keep my distance, I'll be safer. In reality, you're just making yourself more of a target. God's wanting to bring you back in to the kingdom so you have relationship and belonging. Because when you're separated from the group, there's so many dangers. There's so many dangers. You know, When I look at those dangers, I want to give you some of these things, okay? I want to give you four dangers of being isolated, okay? And how we're going to move through those, all right? So the first one, isolation breeds selfishness, but belonging brings selflessness. See, if you are somebody that is isolated, you're eventually just going to begin to foster and build up selfishness. If you're a loner and you're by yourself all the time, you're going to become a very selfish person. You know, when I look at people, you know, that are in marriage or they've been married and divorced, whatever it is, you know, and if you've been in a relationship like that, okay, you've been married or you are married, it is the greatest test of selflessness. You know why most times that relationships don't work? If you get down to the root of it, somebody got selfish. Hello? A couple of you got that, okay. But that's sometimes why the body of Christ doesn't work either. Body of Christ doesn't work because somebody got selfish. It's about me, myself, and I, and nobody else. So do it my way, have it my way, okay? It's not Burger King. There's all of us that got to work together and love on each other. And the thing is, is that if we understand something, we have to get ourselves out of isolation because it fosters selfishness. And what do we see Christ modeling for us? Selflessness. He's modeling that for us every moment. And that's what we are as his disciples. We're supposed to be selfless. We have to move into belonging so that we can begin to take the selfishness that's naturally in every one of us and begin to combat it with selflessness. When we're selfless, we serve people. When we're selfless, we love people. When we're selfless, we look for opportunities to develop a relationship because maybe it's not just good for me, but it's good for them. We want to be selfless. We have to be careful of this danger of isolating ourselves because it produces selfishness, all right? Second thing, isolation breeds weakness, but belonging brings strength. You know, we get into trouble when we're alone. Consider David. He's alone. Then he gets with Bathsheba. Consider Samson. When he's alone, he finally yields to Delilah. When we get alone, we make mistakes, See, we forgot what accountability is. Accountability in the body of Christ is where we are holding each other up so that we might serve each other and we might grow in Christ and we might help each other be strong and not weak. The enemy is looking for your weakness. And when he isolates you, he's got you because you are more susceptible to your weaknesses. We think that in the kingdom of God, that we're not responsible for each other. But if you declare that you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're my brother and sister in Christ, and I am yours. And in that, you're responsible for me as much as I am for you. And when we're responsible for each other, we have to understand and help each other in our weakness. And see, when we are weak, 
We make failures. We have mistakes. But when we're in a relationship with others, we're stronger. It gets us back on track. It helps us understand where we need to be and what we need to do. See, the thing is, is that some of you, if you find yourself constantly in a battle and you're constantly losing and you rarely ever find victory, it's because you are isolating yourself and you're becoming weak. You want victory in your life? Have community and have belonging and you'll find strength. If you are struggling in an area of your life, get community, get belonging, get relationship, and you'll find strength over that. See, the thing is, is I have had to learn that when I isolate myself, I give in to my weaknesses. But as I have built relationship within the body of Christ, I have become stronger. I have made my fair share of mistakes. I have given in to my weaknesses. But I know and I have learned through the school of hard knocks, which is a horrible school to go to, that I can be stronger when I partner and have relationship and belonging. Third thing, isolation breeds stupidity, but belonging brings truth. You know, common sense isn't so common anymore. See, the reality is, is that when you're alone, you get weird. Seriously. You ever talk to somebody and they got this weird theology or got this off-base perspective? It's because they're isolated and they're not checking their thoughts or their perspective with anybody else. And I'm telling you, we live in a day where there are more and more weird people. We live in a day where more and more people are isolated and therefore they get, develop their own theology, their own perspective and da-da-da-da. And if it ain't measured against the word of God, then it's not truth. That's our measuring stick. And sometimes we don't all know the word of God, so we got to check with each other. we got to bounce things off each other. But when we're in isolation, we get stupid. And see, in my house, my kids can't say that. They can't say, you're stupid. You can't say that. But that is the truth of what we become when we isolate ourselves. We become ignorant of our understanding, our perspective. We think that we've got it all figured out and we have nobody to bounce it off of. And that's why the body of Christ is crucial. That's why I say, read the Bible and don't take a preacher's word for it. Somebody came up and goes, you missed, that, that's actually, that says that right there. So it was off a little bit. I'm like, wow. You know, I didn't get mad. I'm like, sweet. I gave her a hug and I said, thank you. You just made my sermon better for the second service. <laughs> so you're getting a modified product. So you should be happy a more truthful biblical product. I hate to tell you, but we get it wrong sometimes. And I don't care what credentials you have in front of your name or behind your name. I don't care. We all get it wrong sometimes. And we need each other so that we don't fall into stupidity. We need each other so we find ourselves in truth. The word of God says that we need to do this for each other. The word of God declares that we're to be in belonging and relationship so that we can walk in truth. People say, I don't need church. That's a person that's isolated and I'm, I, I'm nervous for them. Because their perspective gets skewed and it's not biblical. We've got to have each other. We've got to move into a balanced lifestyle, but it only happens through relationship. Proverbs 20, 27, 17 says this. Iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. I become sharper. I become better because of you. You become better and you become sharper because of me and vice versa. We look at each other and if we will spend time in relationship with each other, we can actually grow and become sharpened. The body of Christ in America is weak today because we've isolated ourselves. It's time we stop it. It's time we break it. What I love about Bethel, and I said this in our connection point class just a little bit ago, is that there are so many different denominations uh, denomination perspectives that come in here. We all come from different walks of life. But what I love even more than that is that if you look around the room, look at the, the generations represented. We have the old to the young. And you know what? The young need the olders to be wise. And the older need the young to have zeal. We need each other. And we grow when we sharpen each other. We grow when we spend time with each other. We grow when we belong to each other. Not just to ourselves. We can point out each other's blind spots. And if you're isolated this morning, you find yourself all alone, you need to start making tracks back to a relationship of belonging with the body of Christ. Proverbs 20, or 19, 25 says, rebuke a wise man and he will be wiser still. You know, 
I say this, and please don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to brag, I just want to share, is that ever since I got saved and when I went to college, I, my prayer was, God, help me be wise. Help me to understand wisdom. And I began to study the Proverbs, and I began to look into God's word, and I began to ask people that were older than wiser than I to speak into my life, and I gave them permission. I gave them permission to tell me when I was wrong, and I gave them permission to speak into me in the deepest parts of my life. And I believe that I am a wise, wiser person than most my age because of that. And that is not by my own doing. That's by God's grace. But I couldn't be what I am today if it wasn't for me allowing people to speak into me, even when I messed up. We don't like to be rebuked. We don't like to be told we're wrong. We don't like to be said, hey, this is an area of weakness. We don't like to be told, hey, this is a little skewed. You might want to bring this back into balance. We don't like that. Who likes to get their hand slapped, right? No. Nobody likes it. But I'll tell you what, the more that I've had my hand slapped, the more I, I don't mind it because I become better. I grow in who I am and who I am in Christ. I want to encourage you. Take a little discipline now so you can have so much more freedom later. Grow and great, get relationship. Get out of your isolation. Find belonging. Number four. Another danger is isolation breeds despair, but belonging brings wholeness. You know, as a pastor and then also working with the sheriff's department, I have to say, I see a lot of suicides and attempted suicides. I see a lot of stuff like this, and we live in a world where it just seems like more and more people are in more and more despair. And the more people I see and the common denominator is, They've isolated themselves and they're utterly alone. They're alone. Now, whether it's by just their own doing or by just a set of circumstances, they've never sought out to get out of their isolation and into community. And when we isolate ourselves, we're susceptible to make horrible, lasting mistakes. And the reality is, is God wants to pull us into relationship so that we don't find ourselves in despair. See, I've had my valley moments where I'm in the darkest valley and I'm in despair. And I've had my hilltop moments where I'm having the best time of my life. And the reality is, is when I'm having the best time of my life, it's not worth celebrating if there's no one to celebrate it with. But then I've had those moments of despair. And when it seems like I'm all alone, there's somebody that comes and stands beside me and helps me get through that valley, that valley of despair. See, when we turn to each other, not just to him, but to each other in relationship, we find ourselves stepping continually out of the despair and into uh, this wholeness that we find in our heart. We find wholeness. We find satisfaction. Now, I've shared this with you before, but consider two disciples of Jesus. You have Judas and you have Peter. First, Judas betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. We can get into all the stuff of why he did it or whatever, but he does this. He turns his back on Jesus. Then you have Peter, who at the moment after he's arrested, three times somebody says, Don't, aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? He denies Jesus publicly three times. Now, both of them turn their back on Jesus. But what's interesting is, is that it says in the scripture that Judas went off by himself and he hung himself. Peter, on the other hand, we read later in the book of Matthew that he ends up with his friends out fishing when he sees Jesus again after resurrection. See, Peter ran to his connections, his relationship, his community. And yes, he was in despair, but he made it through his moment of despair. Judas, on the other hand, went off and isolated himself. Now you can say, well, I've, I'm not Judas. I didn't betray Jesus. You're missing my point. That when you isolate yourself, you are more susceptible to give in to despair instead of turning a corner and finding wholeness again. See, isolation is exactly what the enemy wants you to do. I don't need the church. I don't need my brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't need this whole church thing. Don't buy into the lie of the enemy. God is looking for you to have belonging and relationship once again. You know, we don't say love people and share life in our vision just because just it sounds nice. Loving people is hard, isn't it? 
But when we love each other, even when we have our worst moments or we have our worst attitudes, we help bring each other back into right walk with Christ. When we struggle through the hard times of life together, it bonds us together. We've got to understand that we need each other, that we need to find wholeness, that we've got to get past our isolation. God wants us to move from whatever degree of isolation we're in now to a place of belonging. How do we do that again? Recognize our need. Fight through the barriers and those ideas of isolation. Don't give in to those ideas and those perceptions that if I isolate myself, then I'll be protected. No, you just, you just made yourself more of a target. And lastly, you got to experience it. Now, I don't know about you guys. And of course, you know, it's about lunchtime. So I'm going to say this. You know, have you ever bit into a nice, big, juicy steak? Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, dang it, I'm hungry. I want to go eat lunch, right? So, but do you ever have a, just an amazing steak or, you know, for some of you that don't like steak, chicken, whatever it is. But when you have something that's amazing like that, it's kind of hard just to go from that bite of a big piece of juicy steak into a hot dog. You're like, this ballpark is great. See, the reality is if you truly find relationship and belonging and you just get a small taste of it, you'll never want to go back to your isolation. You'll never want to go back to it because you've tasted of what God intended for us. And it's to have relationship with him, yes, but it's also to have relationship with each other. I need you and you need me and we need each other. It doesn't matter our backgrounds or our perspectives, but when Christ is in our life, it unifies us and it brings us together and it helps us grow in who we need to become. It keeps us from despair. It keeps us from making bad decisions and stupid mistakes. It keeps us from walking down these paths that ultimately end to pain and agony and brings us into wholeness and satisfaction. See, when you just experience it just a little, you'll never want to go back. You'll never want to go back. Some of you, you might sit here and say, you know what, I sit here and I wait and I wait and I wait for somebody to come talk to me or shake my hand. I'm sorry that you've had to sit there and wait and wait and wait. But let me say this. For your own good, just reach out your hand. If somebody walks by you, just say your name. If you feel awkward, here's what we're going to do. Say, everybody raise your right hand. Come on, interactive this morning. Say, I I pledge pledge to deal deal with with everybody's awkwardness. Okay. So when somebody comes up to you and they just don't even know what to say and they're like, they just start off with, Jim, you've already pledged. You're going to deal with the awkwardness. Just say, Jim, I'm Jared. And just start getting to know each other. Sometimes we're so afraid because we don't know how to start the conversation. I just started it for you. It starts with a name. And it starts with a hi. Hi. And what do you do? And the greatest question we could ever ask each other is, what do you need? Sometimes it's just somebody to sit with you. Somebody, sometimes it's just praying with you. Some of you in this room, you feel so isolated and so alone. Jesus is tugging on your heart right now. He's saying, just step out and experience it. Get out of your isolation and belong once again to the body of Christ. Would you stand with me this morning? This is the place where I found belonging. This is the place where I found friendship and relationship. It's not because I'm the pastor. For those of you that don't know my history, yeah, I met Jesus here when I was in high school in this church. But six and a half years ago when I came here, I sat in the back over there. And I wasn't even on staff and I didn't do anything. 
And you know where the relationship started pouring in is when I started to volunteer, started serving, and I started getting connected with people and developing those relationships. So I didn't just arrive here and become the pastor. I sat in the back and I just looked for somebody to connect to. So I don't care where you've been or what you've done, nor does God. He just cares about where you're going next. And if ultimately that's in a relationship with him and a relationship within the body. I cannot be who I am today without you. I can't. And you can't be who you are without me or without the person next to you. That's the truth. You know, I was talking to Cliff Schleining, and uh, he said, you know, I went, when he first started deciding this, checking out this whole church thing, <laughs> he said, I went to a lot of churches, and nobody shook my hand, nobody talked to me, nobody's really ever friendly. He goes, but when I came to Bethel, man, they were friendly. I'm asking you to go beyond just a handshake. Let's get to know each other. Let's belong in relationship to each other. And whether you volunteer and serve or you just attend church or come on a Wednesday night, but get connected, reach out your hand, even if it's as awkward as just spilling your name. Begin to let people in again. Would you bow your head with me? I want to ask a question. And it's for those of you in this room that you have been isolated. You feel alone and you feel like, you know what, I've got to connect. I need relationship. I need to belong once again. This morning, if you feel like you've been isolated, no matter what got you there, it doesn't matter. But you're ready to move forward in connection, in relationship, in belonging. It might seem a little fearful, but you just need to take that step of faith. If that's you, I want you to put your hand up so I can pray for you. I want you to keep it up for me. There's hands all over this room. You're not alone. Keep your hand up for me. And I want you to be bold and courageous here in just a moment. Keep your hand up. Rest of you, I want you to look around. Look for a hand, and I want you to go stand with them right now. I don't want one person standing alone. Come on. Keep your hands up, guys. Come on. We're going to be the church. We're going to be the body. We're going to stand with each other. Come on. You're going to get connected today. You're going to break past your isolation, and you're going to find belonging and relationship today. Church, this is where the church and we're family, and we're going to pray. And you may not know the person holding their hand up. That's okay. You're going to get to know them in just a minute. All right? Now I'm going to ask to so always start praying. Come on. We're going to start praying. I want you to pray a blessing over them. You know, the Bible says in our tongue, we have the power to bless and the power to curse. I want you to bless them with relationship. Bless them with health. Bless them with joy. Bless them with connection. Bless them in relationship right now. Come on. Bless them with belonging. Lord, I pray for every one of these folks that have lifted up their hand. We pray, God, that they get connected, that we find relationship, that they find belonging to the body of Christ, and they once again find wholeness, God. I pray for those that have been hurt in the past. They have been abandoned or they've been hurt or stabbed in the back. I pray that you heal those wounds in the name of Jesus. And God, that you bring them together with the people beside them. That you put them in relationship. You put them in connection and belonging in Jesus' name. Come on now, church, you're gonna pray. Come on, sometimes we gotta learn to pray from each other. Pray out loud. Pray a blessing over them. Just pray that God blesses them with health and joy. Blesses them with divine appointments and connections. Come on, pray over them. Come on, church. You're not praying. We got to learn to pray from each other. Pray. Pray out loud. Come on. If you don't know how to pray, listen to the person next to you praying. Lord, we just pray for these needs. We ask you to meet them and help them connect. Help them to find a renewal of relationship. Help them to be blessed because they belong. Let them find your love today and the love of the body of Christ. Help them to move past their isolation and find joy again. Lord, we pray over every one of these needs and every one of these people, and we say, God, let them be renewed in relationship, and may they walk out of here knowing someone new today. And God, I pray for everyone in this room 
every one of us. I pray that you go before us and you come behind us, that you bless us with your very presence, that you give us anything and everything that they need. And God, I pray that you will lavish your love upon them and God, shower them with your very presence as they go today. God, I pray you keep them healthy and safe and renewed in your spirit. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen, amen. If you just prayed with that person, make sure you get to know their name. We love you. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you here Wednesday and next week.